Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh! Sedman Graham, welcome to my show. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I, I understand you're from Chicago, Illinois area. That's correct. Born, raised, and still here talking to you right in Chicago. So Illinois. good. Fantastic. Isn't it? Yep. What do you love about it? How do you explain it to people? I love uh, Chicago. I mean, it's the best city in the world in the summertime. Yeah, in the summertime. I mean, it's an incredible city. So uh, I just can't say enough about it. I've been there a long time. Of course, Oprah, you know, started a show there and all of that. So she's been very successful. So Chicago is this great city. Great yeah. people, Midwestern, you know, town, people work hard, you know, solid, that kind of thing. That's right. Hard work in, and you can have, they're very approachable. But you can go up and have a conversation with anyone from Chicago. Absolutely. Absolutely. Congratulations on this book, Sedman, Identity Leadership. Uh, you guys, this is... Let me do a little bit of defining the book. Stop waiting for others to define them or their potential. Take responsibility for your own development. Turn from follow tur and to turn from followers to leaders, leading themselves first and then others. So you guys know how much we always talk about, um, you know, writing, creating your own path, writing your own journey. This goes right up our alley. So Stedman, this book came out of not only your own life, but this is your career. You go around speaking. Yes, I go around speaking and workshops and working with my clients. I have a number of clients I work for. We're really I'm in the schools. I train parents, teachers, and students. We have curriculum. Uh, I'm really trying to get uh, students to self-actualize, understand how to do that, understand how to take information and education, make it relevant to the core of who they are so that they have a foundation for thinking, developing, and improving their life based on their skills, talents, abilities, and their passion. Really, the, the center of this is based on love. So you're either negative or positive, good or bad, will or won't, can or can't, looking at the glass half empty or half full. So how do you grow your essence? How do you grow your potential? How do you grow your uh, uh, your passions? You know, how, how The do you passions, become, like what you're good at. Yeah, what Find you're out good what at. You, yeah. Find out what you do. And find out your purpose. And so the center of this is built around identity, your purpose, your passion, and what makes you uh, happy. Yeah. It's easier said than done, maybe for some. But I do want to ask you this because that it goes with what I just said. Yeah. Um, reading your book, you grew up with not a lot of money. You wouldn't consider yourself incredibly poor, but you just didn't have a lot of money. You had two disabled brothers. Race and skin color were big issues for you when you were younger, but you were determined that you were going to prove your self-worth through basketball, which at the most part you did. You played professionally overseas. And um, that became that became your identity. You were successful in basketball, but then that came to an end. Now, for a lot of athletes and for a lot of people, that when that identity and that part of them ends, it's like it everything ends and they can't find the next part of their journey they think that they found it and it's over by 22 what do you say to those people that's a big one because that's a big drop from playing basketball and having basketball as your identity and all of a sudden you know you developed that skill set all of these years all of a sudden now you have no skills for anything else and you got to transform some way and you don't know what to do and you have no help and you have no knowledge about what to do uh, and you're just looking for a job, you know, because you got to survive. Right. And so somebody told you to go to school. So you went to school, you got your master's and everything. And now you serve in the U.S. Army, all of that. And so now you're saying, what do I do now? And so, I mean, the journey is long. It's a long journey for me to be able to come back. I've given up my life, basically, to be able to teach people about the process of success and how it works because I've gone through it. And then you're defined. I was defined by my relationship, put into a box there. You're defined by your race. You're defined by your house, your car, your money, your title, your job, all of those things. And you're living, basically, in a survival mode. And you can't help but be a follower because you're following everybody else. You're mimicking everybody else. And you don't know what to do. You have no thoughts of your, of your own. You right. can't really think for yourself. You're never taught to really think for yourself. You're just doing what everybody else tells you to do. So basically you become a slave to the world. Yeah. And you never own yourself. 
And so if you're looking for ownership and freedom, you'll never find it. What I discovered is you'll never, Jenny, never, you'll never find it on the outside. Freedom is always on the inside. Always. And you got to go to the pit to find it. You got to go below the pit to get it. So it requires work, internal work, to find out who you are to get to the next level in your journey. Work so you can eliminate all of the time wasters, <laughs> all of the things that are not relevant to your development. So you can basically build from the core of who you are, and that's your strength. That's what makes you strong. That's, that's what makes you overcome the ob obstacles that you're going to face in life is that you know who you are. A hundred percent. And that's one of the questions that he has in his book, who are you? And um, you have to answer them. And it, it, for all those people that are stuck or don't quite know or who have never answered that question, I highly suggest answering the questions in his book because it does tell, help you go inward to answer those questions. I'm talking to Stedman Graham. The book is called Identity Leadership. It's in bookstores today. You know, reading your story too, I've read so many books, obviously, for my show, and it could come across, I hear some people, I hear the tone of a victim or a martyr. You didn't have either of those. But for the people that take those identities and create stories and belief systems out of them, that is a whole other book, I feel. It's not just about finding, you know, your journey, but to lose the story of that victim story in your head because those can have devastating effects for the rest of your life. What do you say to people who are stuck in a woe is me, this was my past, I can't go forward? Yeah, you know, we all, we're often hardwired, which means we've been living in that place most of our life. And the storyboards go round and round and round in our heads. And we have no awareness of what's going on it's because we're stuck. And when you're hardwired, it doesn't go away. You know, you can change the narrative, but it's a slow journey. And you got to deal with the emotional feelings that go with that. So the emotional trauma and what happened to you as a kid and what are you holding on to? And then how do you begin to unpeel the onion mm -hmm. where you can manage it and create a new narrative? So can you disrupt the, the system that's in place because... I, I teach the nine-step success process because it disrupts the system that's in place that makes you average. Which is the you book, know, by the, the way. The school system teaches you how to memorize, take tests, repeat the information back, get labeled with a grade, and two weeks later you forget the information. Right. The rope, the rope does not Dead. work. Dead. Dead. <laughs> the... Uh, the, the system of being in the same, doing the same thing over and over, wake up in the morning, wash your face, brush your teeth, get something, get the kids off school, work all day, come home in the afternoon, spend time with the family, watch TV, go to bed, dead. You're not going anywhere. Mm -mm. So how do you now disrupt those systems, create your own customized system, which the 21st century is asking you for? Where is your system for success based on your skills? What can you actually do? What do you bring to the table? Because we're going to the global marketplace, we're creating opportunities, we're reinventing things, we're creating new information, everything else is changing because technology has changed the game and you are still stuck in the, t in, in the 20th century. So where's your learning process to keep up? Where your, what are your skills? What can you actually do? And if you can't do anything, if you're waiting for somebody else to tell you what to do, if you become a victim to society, right, pretty much you're not going anywhere, you're out. No. So, and that should be a red flag for people, right? They should. I don't even know if people that are in that state can they become self-aware. If somebody teaches you that, if somebody tells you that, if you have the consciousness to understand that, because right now you're unconscious, right? And based on the unconscious, you're going through the same habits that you went through before. That's not relevant to your development. You're not a self-learner. You don't read any books. You don't keep up. You don't have an awareness of what you really do. You don't have any real skills that's relevant to the 21st century. You may not even use technology, so you can't communicate with the world. And you're told that someone else is going to take care of you. And right. you're stuck in that, and you're very comfortable. So you're stuck in that box. And then you're programmed by that. So unless somebody pulls you out of that or gives you some new information about how it's going to work, 
you're pretty much stuck with the 6.9 billion people in the world who are followers, right, and who are consumers. That's right. And so the 1% runs everything. Everybody else is following. So how do you transform from the 99% of the people who are doing the same thing over and over every single day to the 1% who are actually thinking, developing, building, creating, innovating, based Failing. on... Yeah, based on organizing resources around you, which you have done, right, very well, you know, to brand and create your own thinking and innovate and organize and and learn every single day about everything you can possibly learn in order for you to be self-actualized. That's right. That's 21st century thinking. Wow. See, this is why you guys have to get the book identity leadership we've got a great book following too so they're going to get this one identity leadership is in bookstores right now i have to of course ask you i've gotten the pleasure of working with oprah through the years i love her please send her my love thank you so um much. you do bring her up with the book which i'm really grateful you do because uh one thing that oprah says the ability to triumph begins with you always i love that line that's also in your book do you think that because you've been in a relationship with oprah since the mid 80s that it was something that was motivating to you to define yourself. Without it, would you have been as motivated to define yourself? No, I wouldn't have. No, because um, I had pressure. Right. And what happens when you're comfortable, then you don't think about anything but, you know, being comfortable. And so you, you buy into that. the feelings and they become addictive. You know, and, you know, so being able to walk out the door and being... Uh, defined by as Oprah's man, you know, and not and losing your identity was necessary for me to be able to figure out how to discover mine. Wow. And so that was a, not an external process because the world's defining me, putting me in the boxes. They're writing about me. I'm involved in her world. This is her world, not my world. Right. Her world. And I'm trying to figure out what in the world is this? And then you are in the women's uh, also empowerment zone. So not only you're defined by the labels, other labels, racial labels sometimes, you know, you're you're stuck in a empowerment zone where you're there to empower, she's there to empower women, not empower me, even though personally she's supporting me and, and happy for, you know, whatever I can achieve in my life and all of that. But I'm in that zone. Right. And so I've got to figure out, I'm not a woman. No, that's not who I am. And so how do I begin to empower myself so that I can survive all the things I have to to deal with? And I have to use all my emotional strength to be able to do that. Heck yeah. So this is an emotional journey to be able to figure out how to put it all in place so that it, it works for me as opposed to destroying me. And I realize, oh, the answer, if you're looking for freedom, I need freedom. You'll never find it on the outside. Freedom is always on the inside. It's not how, what I learned is, it's not, it doesn't make any difference how people define you. The only thing that matters is how you define yourself. I just didn't have the tools to be able to do that. And so she knows who she is. Fantastic. Great for you. You don't know who you are. Right. And you got a problem in Houston. Do you have any relationships you just defined? There's so many people that have, you know, that could be the next book, Stedman, but how many guys I've dated that wanted me to give them their freedom. Freedom. And they didn't, the relationships didn't work. They didn't Can't last. work. It's impossible because men need to feel empowered. Men Absolutely. need to feel like, you know, they need to feel respected. Nobody can give you that. No. So it doesn't make any difference what, whether it's a relationship, whether it's race, whether it's gender. You have to define yourself, and it's not how the world defines you. It's, it's do you have the tools to be able to create your empowerment, your self-mastery, your self-development, your self-efficacy, your self-discipline. Those are skills. 
And so their skills not only relevant to men in a relationship with very powerful women, they are skills relevant to people of all colors. There are skills relevant to women of all backgrounds. There are skills, if you're entitled and you buy into that, oh, I got a lot of money, my parents have a lot of money, right. I'm entitled, you know, I'm just going to coast. And, and you walk around and you're defined by your parents' money or you're defined by your parents' fame, you know, still a problem. It is. you never find out who you are. You don't have the resilience exactly. to overcome the tough times. So you have to be self-medicated. That's right. You got to self-medicate yourself because you can't live in the real world. So many of us, and I know we only have a couple minutes left, but you said something too. It's like you have to do that work, the work that is so painful. It's that big, yucky, muddy river that we've got to face, jump in, and you know, come out the other side and there's rainbows. But so many people don't. They want to stay in their comfort they, zone. But they don't have the skills. They don't have the process for doing that. This is why I teach it. This is why I, I, you know, I teach people, listen, not about your color, not about your background, not about where you came from, not about your historical baggage, not even about your trauma. It's about being able to get to the core, go down to the pit and visit yourself sometime. You know, you know visit your parents sometime. You know, they did the best they could based on what they knew. If they'd have known better, they'd have done better. Right. So they're doing only what they know. So stop blaming your parents. <laughs> You know, for your life. Stop <laughs> Stop becoming a victim. Get you a book and read. Get you some self-help books, right? That's and learn right. some things about yourself. That's and right. discover some things about yourself. And, and develop some aha moments for yourself, okay? Because it's a journey. And continue that process for the rest of your life. There's no end. No end. No end. It's just constant developing a process for continuous improvement. Everyone is equal because everybody has 24 hours. So the question is, what do you do with your 24 hours? Exactly. And the process of success is the same for everybody. The difference is some people know it, some people don't. And you know it. I mean, it's so obvious that you know it. <laughs> so congratulations I, I, to you. Thank you, you very know, you much, have, Evan. You have freed yourself. <laughs> I have. From the world. I've done From the world. A lot of work. That's right. That's Absolutely. right. It was up to me. Seven Graham, I, this book is amazing. You guys, please pick it up. It is it's so, it's everything that we always talk about identity, leadership. It's in bookstores today. Much love to you. Thank you for giving Thank us this book. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us the, the tools to get there, Stedman. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Take care. Much love to you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. We'll be right back. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh.